Coming in with another NBA winner last night. Denver keeps the points. They get it done. They get the sweep over the Lakers. And stay tuned, guys. Going to have another NBA free bet for you guys tonight. If you guys tuned in yesterday, should have gotten the D-backs. Plus 185. That line kept ticking up, but uh, it was the right side. They should have got it. At, they could have got it at plus 200 by the time this podcast was up. Uh, I felt like a sucker yesterday. The sharp guy <laughs> bet against me in both games. But I kicked their fucking ass. Uh, I I took the Diamondbacks yesterday plus 185 in the morning. That line was ridiculous. Diamondbacks getting no respect. Uh, third best record in National League, second best road record, fourth in, in batting team batting average, six scoring runs. Philly hadn't been scoring. Uh, I think I gave the stat out to Philly had scored three runs or less in, in eight of the last 10 games. Uh, just Guys, Wheeler definitely has had the pitching edge over Henry, but everything else didn't match up. The price should have never. Wheeler's supposed to be favored. Philly's supposed to be favored, not 185. Sharp guys pushed that game as high as you could have took back 200. So I hope you guys buried that. As a matter of fact, uh, you go tread down the baseball card. Uh, ben and I absolutely buried the card. Every lean we had, uh, whether it was the Tigers, whether it was the Rockies, Cincinnati. You know, I had one guy DM me yesterday, uh, show me he made a St. Louis uh, – Diamondback parlay on what I said. I'm like, buddy, I don't know what you're talking about. I would never give out a 200 favorite. Uh, so uh, if, if that guy's out there listening, okay, listen up. Uh, we said Reds or no one. I would know. St. Louis is red hot. Couldn't couldn't pull the trigger on Cincy, but it's Cincy and nobody at that price. Anyway, uh, pretty much clean sweep in, in, in MLB. And, and then uh, basketball, guys, like I said, it was just um, – Get it. We, we and Ben just talking. Give LeBron credit. Uh, guy goes out there. You know, I'm not a LeBron hater. There's a lot of LeBron haters out there. Uh, look what this guy just did. Went and played all 48. Uh, terrific first half. Uh, almost put them on the back. Didn't get the game they needed from AD. Uh, just Denver is that good. Uh, mm -hmm. Denver tailed off at the end of the season. That just the vet, Them and the Heat have just taken their game to another level uh, in the playoffs. Totally, uh, totally improved. Um, Denver hasn't improved as much as the Heat because they were a good team in the regular season, uh, but yeah. where they have gone, which we'll talk about when we get there. But uh, sorry to jump in on you, Ben, but <laughs> we, okay. five, we took the bad number. You guys should have been killing that at plus 190, 195, and even plus 200. Uh, just keep in mind, we're going to lose a lot of those games. Um, when we catch a, a 185 dog, it makes up for a, for a lot of losers, uh, as opposed to the guys, you know, the guy that was taking 20000 out of his cap yesterday, telling you guys, slam, smash, crush the Twins, uh, and they came up empty-handed. Look, I leaned to the Twins uh, myself yesterday, but not at that number. And I wouldn't, when these guys talk and smash and whale betting a lot, false pretenses to you guys. Guys, listen to me, Okay. I'm going to give you an edge. There's an, if we bet a game, we got an edge on the game. No such thing as a lock. Hey, we bet Denver plus three and a half yesterday. In the first half, I'm like, shit, LeBron came to play. All the Lakers, uh, man, they, they were they were out there to play, except yeah. Denver's out there to play too. Colbo Pope played 39 minutes. The other four starters all played 41 minutes or more. Uh, they did not want to go back to Denver. So first half looked ugly. Hey, I thought we had the best of it. I thought they would go in and get the W. Didn't look like that in the first half, but it comes to be. Could have Denver lost? Absolutely. I will never tell you that. We went through this yesterday. Uh, in basketball, a like bet is 3%. A love bet is 5%. That's my biggest bet. It's 5% of your bankroll. So don't smash, put the rent money, put the kids' tuition. No, no such thing. Uh, nice and easy. This is a grind. This isn't get rich overnight. You guys had parlays. Um, so suck his bet. But if you did last night, you know, crushed it with a Denver and Diamondback uh, parlay. Anyway, go ahead. Take it away, Ben, and we'll get moving. Yeah, Denver Diamondback parlay is uh, a lot better than putting in a minus 200 favorite to ruin all the value you just had with Arizona. Uh, but, yeah, we have uh, D-backs first game on the card again. Back at Philly, Nelson versus Strom. Uh, Strom, he was cracked by the Dodgers for four runs and three and a third. Uh, but that was earlier in May. He was actually giving you some good outings prior to that. Uh, he's made four relief uh, outings since then, 6.1 shutout innings. And then Nelson, he had a good start against the A's, but it's the A's take that with a grain of salt. 
Uh, prior to that, uh, gave up seven runs in nine and two thirds. Still D backs or nobody here in this game for me. Uh, Strom, I was impressed with what he gave us earlier this year. One bad start at the Dodger Stadium won't gonna give him, won't, won't hurt that against him too much. Uh, but still, this price is ridiculous, just like yesterday. D backs or nobody. D backs or nobody. Um... Is there a pitch in edge? He got strong now. Uh, he made four relief appearances. Mm -hmm. how, how 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 far can you stretch him out in a game? Uh, as we said, Arizona, what are they, 8-2 and two, their last 10? They just gave you their stats. Told you about Philly. Philly scored, uh, they're 2-6 and six in their last eight. Scored, in three, scored more than three runs just twice in those eight games and scored more than four runs only once in the last eight games. So that's it's Diamondbacks and nobody. Cardinals at Reds. Uh, Reds get it done yesterday. This is a, a game lean to the over again. Same number as yesterday. It's at 10. Wainwright versus Ashcraft. Wainwright uh, not looking so hot so far. Three stars, been tagged in all three. Last two, give up nine runs and 10 and two thirds. Uh, for those of you guys who like a live bet baseball, kind of a weird sport, a live bet. But in his last three starts, he was kind of going steady early on. And then in the first two, gave up four runs each in the fifth inning. And then the last one, it was another three runs added on in the sixth inning. So, uh, maybe get a live over, a live bet against St. Louis in the middle of the game. Ashcraft, last three starts, hasn't been good either. 19 runs in 12 and, two, 12 and a third. Uh, Wainwright, bad history against the Reds last year. This is two pitchers not going well right now. It's home dog or nothing, but uh, I think more value in that over. Home dog or nothing, uh, uh, of course. Uh, but just to get back to what Ben was talking about, Wainwright, uh, this is what age will do. Mm -hmm. You can get something. Look what LeBron did. Uh Come yeah. out gangbusters in the first half yesterday and then gradually tailed off till the fourth quarter. Just not enough left. Same kind of situation here with Wainwright. Still crafty, uh, still good enough to get through those first few innings, just not good enough to put it together long term. Um, but Ashcraft has just been slaughtered. And I mean, slaughtered the last three outings. I would be on Cincy if it wasn't for that. Just can't back him. Get off to a nice start, but uh, been absolutely crushed. Still, again, home dog or no one. It's Padres at Nationals, another home dog. It's another lean in this one, guys. Darvish versus Gore. Gore actually pitched for San Diego last year. They've lost his last four starts. Uh, gave up four runs at Miami his last time out. Darvish has been decent, but he gave up four runs in five and a third against Kansas City. Prior to that, he had two quality starts. Can't bet San Diego, especially as a road favorite. Two and nine, their last 11. They're not hitting. They get a win against the Red Sox in the Red Sox last game of that series, but it's just uh, <laughs> can't lay San Diego as a favorite. Not more beyond that. Uh, Washington, not the best home team, so don't you love this price here for this game? Uh, but them are nobody. Nationals are nobody. Padres beat the Red Sox 7-0 on Sunday. Ten games prior to that, they scored three runs or less in eight of them and scored four runs in each of the other two. Uh, not hitting is an understatement. Batting a cool buck 91 for the week. Uh, dead last uh, team batting average 222. Uh, they're, they're a mess. Dobbs didn't have a great start uh, his last time out. He got beat twice by the Nationals last year. Uh, Nationals are nobody. And it's Dodgers at Atlanta. Miller versus Strider. Uh, big price against the Dodgers here. It was a big price yesterday, and Dodgers pulled it out. Obviously, pitching edge here to Strider. They've won eight of his nine starts. I uh, did give up four runs at Texas last time out. Leads league in strikeouts. And then we had a debut here for Miller. Hasn't been the best. 5.65 ERA in his AAA starts, but his last one was a quality start. One run in six innings. Uh, still, Dodgers are nobody here. I mean, they're scoring runs right now. They come out uh, struggling that trip at St. Louis, but we're still scoring. They're two and three right now on the trip, 6.2 runs per game. Uh, Braves, you have them two and two on the homestand. It's a uh, really big price there for a Dodgers offense who's red hot. Pitching edge, though, clear as day to Strider. Yeah, we bet against Strider um, last game. Um, he, was, he was facing Texas in that game, another good hitting team. Mm -hmm. Had the lead 5 3. We lost that game late. Um, Miller, Miller is, is, he's been having a rough time in AAA. Dodgers are hurting for, for arms. Uh, May just went on the, the, the injured list also. Uh, so they're bringing up this kid, Miller. Uh, shops are all over this game. This game opened up. You could have taken 200 on the overnight. And at that number, I would have definitely taken a shot with the Dodgers. That number now down to the, the best you could take is like at 178 I'm looking at at Circa. So that number's been beat up. I can't back uh, the kid Miller in this spot at 178-200. Would be a, a, a different story. But look, again, you guys, remember, when we say uh, 
the Dodgers are nobody. It's the dog or nobody. Again, we're not advocating. We're just saying you, you can't bet the other side. If something's to happen, I could bet the Dodgers. Acuna Jr. is out of the lineup tonight. I can bet the draw. The line goes back up to 220. You can take 200. I can bet the Dodgers. So right at this number, Dodgers or no one, but I would not take uh, this low number. And then it's uh, Mets at Cubs, Sango versus Smiley. I like the Cubs in this spot. Uh, only problem is their eyes cold, and the Mets are getting hot right now. Mets have won five of six. Uh, they have this Cubs team coming in, scored just two runs their last two games, and went two and seven on the trip. I've been a bit better at home, but uh, Mets took three or four at Chicago last year. Sanga, six-plus ERA on the road. Smiley is 2.14 ERA at home. Uh, pitching edge to Smiley, but uh, Mets getting it going right now. Cubs are no one for me. Tough to go against the hot and cold. Yeah, no, I, 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 Ben's looking more at the uh, pitching matchup, and I agree 100% with him. Smiley definitely gets the big pitching advantage over Sanga on the road. Uh, but two teams going in different directions if you've been watching the show uh, we've been talking about it since uh, the Mets had that comeback win against Tampa Bay. Uh, they're down 5-2 in the ninth, tied in the ninth. Tampa Bay goes up in the, in the tenth uh, by two runs. Alonzo hits a three-run walk-off. They win the next game against Tampa Bay. They sweep three games against Cleveland, including the, the, the Tampa Bay game was a big game. Mm. The doubleheader on Sunday may have been the biggest two games of the year for the Mets because they got great pitching performances out of Verlander and Shiza. And if they're going anywhere, they're going to need those yeah. two, A, to be healthy and to come up with the performances. Mets are going to be riding high, cloud nine, coming into Chicago. Uh, Cubbies, just they've been terrible, absolutely terrible on the road. Uh, the bats haven't been doing what they were doing earlier in the year. Smiley has a pitching advantage, but can't buck, buck the buzzsaw Mets against the struggling Cubs team right now. Mars at Rockies. Rockies get the win yesterday. They won the last four meetings there in Colorado. Uh, you have Miami coming in now. They've lost three of four. Rockies, uh, they snapped their three-game losing streak. Perez versus Gomber. Perez, just two starts so far, been very good. Three runs in nine and two-thirds, 13 Ks, three walks. Gomber, he was roughed up against the Reds his last time out. Prior to that, he had three quality starts. Uh, this is uh, Rockies are no one. Just they've been playing good at home, eight and three the last 11 home games. Perez, young guy, going into his first start at Coors Field. I will bet against the young guy in his first start against Coors Field pretty much any time. So this is uh, Gomber and the Rockies are no one for me. I'll give the Rockies a slight edge. Uh, Gomber pitched real good uh, prior to his last start. We actually had Gomber, his last start out um, in Colorado. He got, he got roughed up. That was against the Reds. It was just that they absolutely slaughtered uh, the Reds pitcher, yeah. that, um, which is what they do. Uh, Expect uh, more of the same. Uh, this game to me was a little too high. Marlins came out as a 115 favorite last night. They, they went up a little bit overnight. Uh, the shops have taken the 115. Now the game averaging out to just, just about where it should be. Um, pretty much back to where it started at minus 115 to minus 117. And we have White Sox at Guardians. Guardians uh, get a blink up yesterday with Gaddis. Kind of a random pitching performance there. It's uh, White Sox prior to this coming into the series. are playing pretty well. Cleveland's still not scoring too much. Uh, what is it? Scored eight runs in the last three games. Uh, this is Cease versus Allen. Cease starting to turn around a little bit. Last two starts were quality starts. Had good numbers against Cleveland last year. One of those quality starts against Cleveland. Uh, and then we have Allen, who had a good start against the White Sox earlier this week. One run in five and two-thirds. Still got to give the pitching edge to Cease, even though with the bumpy start this year. And uh, you got a number here with him as a road dog. Lean here to the White Sox. I liked them yesterday, too. Uh, you had Naylor took the day off. That Guardians team still not hitting. Was kind of shocked to see the White Sox get blanked, though. Thought they turned it around. Thought their bats were starting to get going a little bit. Uh, did not like seeing them get blanked against Gaddis. So lean here to the White Sox, uh, especially with his pitching matchup. Just can either of these teams hit? I mean, really, it seems first to get three or four runs is going to win this game. Yeah, it seems to be the problem with the White Sox. Every time you think they are starting to turn it around, yeah. they're not. Uh, they get shut out by Gaddis, who looked absolutely horrible. Didn't look like he'd get past the fourth inning. Mm -hmm. uh, comes up with, with, a, with, a, with a game. <clears throat> These two pitches hooked up um, last week, as Ben said, with uh, Allen coming out on top three to one. I think the roles are reversed today. Uh, the money has gone all to Cleveland. Uh, game open minus 110 on the overnight. Up right now to around minus 125, 126. Uh, look, Cleveland can't score. Uh, we talked about it. Guardians now 
29 scoring 3.55 runs per game, 28 hitting 226. Uh, White Sox are doing a little better than that. I got to give Cease a little bit of the uh, pitching edge. Mm-hmm. Uh, Allen's look good in his uh, first few starts of his career, but got to give Cease uh, the edge. Thinks he'll thinks he, I think he'll turn around great numbers uh, against the Whites uh, against the um, uh, Guardians last year. 1.96. ERA. We're just waiting to see the lineups on that one and how high that number goes. Uh, I'm on the White Sox. Yeah, Cease last year started off kind of slow as well, and then this kind of year, May heading into June, he just turned it to a new level the rest of the year. So we'll see if he uh, goes on a similar path. Uh, Toronto at Tampa Bay. So Rays get the win yesterday, 3-1 and one on the homestand. They are just killing it at home. Uh, you have Barrios on the mound for Toronto today. This Jays team struggling. That was the last 7 of 8. Uh, you have Barrios, who's not good on the road, six plus ERA on the road. Uh, this is he has decent numbers against Tampa Bay. Had a decent start against them earlier this season. Um, and then Bradley, who had a good start, he's been giving nothing but solid starts here for Tampa Bay. He's also one of those teams right now. A lot of injuries in the pitching rotation. Uh, and his return, a lot of two runs and in five innings against the Mets. They won all three of his April starts. This is uh, Razor Nobody. I've been going at home. Can't back barriers on the road. Toronto's ice cold. I thought they were going to come in yesterday and maybe get this series off of the right foot with Bassett on the mound. Didn't happen. Uh, if Rays took Bassett, or Bassett for a ride, I can only imagine what they're going to do to Barrios today. Yeah, um, just what Ben said. Hey, the shops just keep betting Toronto day in and day out. Um, the, the four of the last six games of the homestead of Toronto, they were they were on. Um, we bet against Toronto. Two of the games against the Yankees. Two of the games with the Orioles. Uh, they just keep betting them. They bet them again yesterday. They flipped the favorite from the Rays being favorite to Toronto being favorite. More of the same today. Uh, game opened up minus 135 last night, down as low as minus 121 at Circa. Now, I, I don't see it. Not with Berrios pitching. Uh, they're ice cold. Tampa Bay does nothing but win at home. Mm-hmm. Yet they brought it down a little bit. Uh, we said there's always going to be that national reg- regression. They weren't going to play 800 ball the whole year. But still, lead the league, lead the league in homers, second in scoring, uh, second in batting average, um, and Berrios not good on the road. Tam- I'm not rarely on favorites, but Tampa Bay are nobody. And we have a fun AL East matchup. You have Orioles uh, coming off a sweep at Toronto. Yanks had their sweep at Toronto prior. They're coming in after their 6-1 and one trip. Uh, they get wins at Cincinnati. Cole versus Bradish. Cole been good. He's coming off a six shutout innings versus Toronto after struggling against Tampa Bay. Uh, went one and two, four point two nine versus Baltimore last year, and then Bradish uh, last two starts, both quality starts. He's been pitching well. Was decent against the Yanks last year, four and runs and nine and a third. Uh, pitching guys definitely a Cole, but big number here for two hot teams coming in. Uh, probably going to be a little bit of a slugfest of a series. Got to be Baltimore. Nobody here. Big dog prize for one of the hottest teams in baseball. We took Orioles plus 150 this morning. Um, hey, Cole has been – so let me throw these stats at you guys. Uh, Cole, two starts against the Rays. He's given up four home runs, 6.30 ERA. Against everybody else, uh, Cole with a 1.20 ERA and has not given up a home run. Uh, mm-hmm. That's about as dominating as, as you can get. Look behind the stats with Bradish. He had one bad start. He got lit up for seven runs by the Red Sox. Take out that start. He's got a 2.10 ERA. Mm. Uh, that's a huge number. Uh, Baltimore, same as Arizona, even more so. Uh, yeah. Second best record, uh, second best road record. All they do is win. Um, Bradish, look, Cole still gets the pitching edge. No, no question about it. Uh, we're taking a dollar fifty with a, with a, a, as hot as the Yankees are. So are the Orioles. I got Orioles plus 150 in this one. And it's Tigers at Kansas City. Rodriguez, uh, he was pitching phenomenal. Gave up four runs in five innings at, against the Pirates his last time out. Prior to that, it was just two runs in 41 and two-thirds. We'll see if he gets back on track against a bad KC team. Uh, 6.2 shutout innings. Still waiting on a KC pitcher there. This would uh, – I don't really care who the, the who Kansas City throws today. No way could I bet against Rodriguez. Yes, bad start last time out, but – He's been one of the more consistent guys. I expect him to get a bounce back here against KC today. Well, again, we'll see who the KC pitcher is and what the number is. I, I don't. I, all that, I, everything depends on that. You know, you can tell me they, they they've got uh, Granky at home today and the price is two hundred. Then I could be on KC, but that, that's not the case. I'm just saying, for example. So mm-hmm. 
Uh, we'll pass on this one until they get a pitcher in the box. Um, take that next one, Ben. Red Sox at Angels. It's Bay versus Canning. Angels get it done 2-1 last night. Red Sox won 3-4 or four earlier this year. Uh, Bayo, he's been better. Sox have won his last five starts, last two, three runs in 11 innings. Uh, walks did tick up. He had five walks his last time out, but uh, still been a lot better. Canning, last three starts, 13 runs in 14 innings. So give the pitching edge a little bit here to Bayo. We'll see if he can continue to provide that. Uh, the Angels bats kind of cool right now. Red Sox scored just one run in the last two. So they had their little win streak. Bats were hot and just fell off a cliff. Just one run in the last two. Sox are nobody, but not a series. A tough, tough game to get a read on for me. Right, right line for me. Um, Red Sox and Bayo deserve to be a favorite. Bayo's the second best pitcher on Red Sox now. Sales, yeah. sales their best pitcher. Bayo's second best pitcher. I mean, who else they got? They got Hauk, they got Pavetta. But Pavetta could be good some days, and some days he's batting practice. Mm -hmm. uh, Canning has been horrible for the Angels. Red Sox deserve to be a small favorite. That's just what they are a 110 favorite. Right on the number. I'll leave that alone. They'd be a bigger favorite, and I could get behind the Red Sox if their bats hadn't cooled off. We get shut out Sunday in San Diego. We'll get only one run last night. Uh, so you, you don't, I don't like to have cold bats going for me. Uh, minus 110 is the right number. And the uh, last AL game is A's at Seattle. This uh, Oakland team keeps losing. What is it now? 2-13 in the last 15, 5-20, 5-19 on the road, whatever it is. They're just not getting wins. Uh, Medina. Three career starts. Last two, though, quality starts. Step, step up, nine Ks, two walks. Uh, Gonzalez, I mean, Boston took him for a ride last time out for eight runs and one and two-thirds. He had two quality starts before that. Last couple of days, I've been looking at this Oakland team and looking at the line. I feel like, I mean, obviously, it's always an overlay against the Oakland. I could, I could argue with the last couple of days, this same spot. Still the same thing. I feel like the A's are due for a little bit of a win here. Uh, tough to kind of gauge that when it's going to happen. Leaning to the A's at this big number, tough to bet them. Haven't bet them in weeks. I learned my lesson early on this season. I uh, can't do it today either. I wanted to do it. Uh, the Sharps did. They pulled the trigger. This game opened up minus 250 on an overnight. You could have took back 224. Down right now as low as 180. Uh, but I got 185 in Jazz. Um, Oakland's, uh, Oakland's just terrible. What they do do, they do hit left. <coughs> excuse me, they do hit left-handed pitchers a little bit better. Um, although they're batting 205 this week, 226 for the year, they're batting 257 against left-handed pitchers. So they've been able to get to, to the lefties. Gonzalez absolutely hammered his last time out. Eight runs, eight hits, and an inning and two thirds. Uh, he's a lefty, that's why I'm bringing up the stats. Um, Seattle hasn't been crushing, especially at home. Just 11 and 12 at home. The price was right. Do I want to get behind an Oakland team? Uh, we talk about it every day. Historically bad. Uh, they've lost uh, five straight, scoring just 1.6 runs per game. Mariners have owned the series. They've won seven of the last eight. It's Oakland and nobody. But again, do you do I do you pull the trigger? Um, this kid Medina could be one of their better pitches. He was torched in his first uh, start. He's made he's made three starts this year. Torched in the first one. Last two. Bold quality starts. Once again, it's A's or nobody. If the number was back at that 220, uh, I I could I could see betting the A's. Not not a play for me now that it's down to the 180, 185. Then it's uh, Rangers at Pirates. Evaldi on the bump. He's been great. Six straight quality starts. Last four, three, it? three runs, 32 and two thirds, 30 Ks, five walks. Been dominant. He's been better on the road. Sub two ERA and five starts. Uh, Rich Hill, weird guy. He's one of those that uh, is actually worse at home. I thought it might be one of those splits because he was pitching in Fenway last year, struggling in Pittsburgh this year as well. One and two, 5.25 and five starts. He did just hold the Tigers to one hit and six shutout innings at Detroit his last time out. Uh, prior to that, gave up seven runs in nine innings. Massive pitching edge here to Eovaldi. Massive lineup edge to the Rangers. This is uh, a Rangers team that lost yesterday. Could see a little bit of value here in them as a favorite on the road. I'm not jumping out of my seat to lay this big of a price. No interest in Pittsburgh in this game. This is an overlay. Um, <clears throat> Eovaldi's just been phenomenal. We had him We had him the last time out also. Uh, he left the game with a 5-3 lead over the Braves, uh, only for the bullpen to blow that one. Uh, huge pitching advantage, even though Hill's been uh, serviceable in his, in his few starts. Um, range is just too much. Before last night, uh, they swept Colorado, scoring 31 in the three games. Mm -hmm. uh, they lead major leagues 
in scoring with 6.4 runs per game, batting at 271 uh, for the year, and they're even better against lefties hitting 295. It's an overlay, but I'm not getting behind the Pirates, uh, even though they're a home dog. And it's Astros at Brewers. Red, 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 hot Astros. Eight straight. Uh, what is it? 11 of their last 12. They come in hitting 296 this week. Brewers have lost four or five. France versus Rhea. I mean, France, he gave up uh, six runs and nine hits, three homers his last time out. Prior to that, his first two starts were really good. One run at 11 2 third. And for Rhea, he gave up four runs and three and two thirds versus Kansas City. Pitching edge slightly to France, not major either way you want to look at it, but huge lineup edge to Houston and just a team edge. They're rolling right now. Uh, I would need a lot more to want to go against this Astros lineup today. Yeah, you pretty much again the right number here. I'm, I'm right in the middle with this line. Uh, red hot Houston, ice cold Milwaukee. Milwaukee had picked up that one win uh, at Tampa Bay against their uh, uh, a bullpen game. Uh, just not scoring. Brewers losing four or five, 2.4 runs per game. Astros red hot. No interest in the home dog here either. And last game on the MLB card, Giants at Minnesota. Very good pitching matchup. Cobb versus Gray. Uh, Cobb last start wasn't too good. Two runs in three and a third. He had five walks. Prior to that, though, three runs in 28 and a third in his four prior starts. Gray leads the league in ERA, but his last couple of starts hasn't been so good. They've lost the last three. Gave up six runs in 14 and a third. Kind of dropped off a little bit from his unreasonable start he was on this season. Still give him the slight pitching edge. Cobb usually a bit better at home. Uh, but Giants, red hot, 6-7 or seven coming into this. Twins have lost 4-5. or five. Giants all the way in this game. Yeah, this line open at minus 135 on the overnight, and all the money's going on in Minnesota as it did yesterday. Um, this game right now sitting up at 152. Two to, I, I don't make the game that high. Ryan has pitched uh, – Gray has pitched great. Uh, and as Ben said, Cobb, real good, but not as good uh, on the road. Um, San Fran takes the first game. Numbers there, just, it's, it's, it's just a little high. Again, would lean to San Francisco, slightest of leans. Uh, we'll wait to see if this game goes much higher and what the lineups look like. And then we have uh, the NBA game for tonight, John Celtics at Miami. We got the sweep last night. Do we see another sweep going yeah. on tonight? Yes, we do. Uh, <laughs> Boston's a they're, they're a broken team right now. Um, uh, ben put uh, every day, guys. If you want to check our Instagram, we do the trend of the day. And what, what was the the no no team has come back from 3-0. But then Ben took it to the next step. I think it was ninety. The record was 95 and 50 something of teams uh, going into game four, going for the sweep. Uh, that sh sh held true last night with Denver. It looked very tough for a team to be down 0 3 and to have to come back. But even harder when you literally get the heart stomped out of you. And that happened last night because game three, Lakers were actually ahead in game three. They take a lead after being down the entire game pretty much in the fourth quarter only to let Denver go on a 13-0 commanding run. They never get back in the game. Not the case with Miami uh, in game three. They just stomped the shit out of the heat. Uh, Zula, um, Missoula is a baby. He's 32 years old. This, he's got no coaching experience, never been here. He's overmatched. Balestra, one of the best coaches in the game, uh, been in, in, the, in the playoff wars. He's uh, making changes on the go. Missoula just don't even know what to do. Looks like a deer in the headlights. The guy actually had the audacity to stay in the press conference after game three. He didn't get them ready. You didn't get them ready? Really? <laughs> they looked ready. <laughs> Not get them ready down 2-0. Um also said the defense has regressed. Again, could you be more obvious? The defense has regressed. Uh, they had held the 76ers to 101, I believe 101.8 points per game in that series. Um, the Heat are, let me see what the Heat are killing them for now. Uh, series 113. Right, so the Heat have given those. The Heat has scored 120.6 points per game in this series, while they held the 76ers to 101.9. Yeah, I would say there's some regression defensively. Um, Jack Tatum has disappeared. Uh, pretty much, he look. He yep. disappeared in the two fourth quarters in Boston, and I actually wrote in our preview, um, Jason Tatum led 
the team with quotation marks with 14 points on six of 18 shooting. I think Jalen Brown is two for 20 from three. Um, Miami shooting the lights out. Boston, Boston's a dead team. I think Miami gets it done. Another 4 0 sweep. Yeah, I mentioned it a lot throughout the year that this Boston team, the defense doesn't what they had. Part of that's on Missoula, part of that's on the team, but wasn't the same as last year. Uh, this playoffs, you know, it was kind of scrappy. They were able to go toe to toe with the Philly team who wasn't putting up a lot of points, so they got away with it. This Miami team, they're hitting shots, they're making them pay, and of course, they're playing defense. So when you're all offensive minded, I think to the Lakers it was the opposite a little bit. Lakers just all defensive minded, and they finally faced the offense they can't stop. Um, and Boston's kind of running into this Miami team now that's getting it done on both sides of the floor, and they're not keeping up defensively. Game four at home, both these, I, th I think Miami sees Denver with the sweep. They want their uh, eight days off as well. This is uh, coaching edge, team edge, morale edge, home edge, whatever you want to talk about, it's there. Heat or nothing in this game. Look, coming in, coming into, well, coming into the playoffs, um, I had Celtics traded as the second best team just below Milwaukee. Again, what Miami has done um, from the end of the regular season and then losing their, their best shooter, uh, one of their better players, Tyler yeah. Hero, to, to the broken wrist, uh, they've just gotten better each game as the games have gone on. Um, and they're red Dallas. Hot. I was just saying, and to think Dallas didn't even try to make the play in. They, they thought the play in was a waste of time. They wanted their top 10 protected pick, and, you know, Miami's now my code of the finals. Um, Miami's going to the finals. Um, great job. Uh, just taking that, that team to another level. This, uh, the, the, coaching, the coaching edge is huge. Um, uh, we gave the stat out yesterday, I believe. So Miami, uh, when being down double digits in the fourth quarter, are three and two in this playoffs, this year's playoffs. And I believe the rest of the teams are one and 53 yeah, <laughs> being down by double digits. So this is this is when you have a guy that's been there. This is a team that doesn't give up. Uh, they did it against Milwaukee. They did it against the, the, the Celtics and the Celtics building. Um, I, again, I just don't know how they have – they're demoralized. I just see a demoralized team. Brogdon's coming out saying our, our defense isn't what it be. Look, they've had struggles the whole playoffs. Uh, just 8-8 eight, eight now in, in the playoffs. Uh, Celtics got beat by the Hawks in their own building. Um, Sixers go and beat them without Embiid in their own building. Uh, just, just not that they, they were a better team in the in the regular season. Reverse was true for the Heat. They were a worse team. Yeah. Roles were reversed. Uh, Heat have got all the momentum. This is more of a momentum play. If you go to my ratings, I actually still have the Celtics rated a half point better on the road than the Heat are at home. Now, those are what the ratings are. Um, but these teams are going in two different directions. The 3 0 lead, again, like I said, I saw a demoralized team. I saw a, I saw a coach with a deer in the headlights look. Uh, I think this is another blowout. That's the uh, NBA bet today, guys. We ran through the MLB card. We will uh, be back here every single day, try to get these up around 1 o'clock Eastern, sometimes a little bit quicker, sometimes a little slower. Blame YouTube. Uh, other than that, though, make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment, help us grow these. Don't know if you guys have any questions. Put those up and out there as well. John, anything else? A pretty good start to the week, and we got a good amount of action coming today. Uh, plus 185 uh, baseball and, a, and a, an NBA winner. It's a real nice start to the week. Uh, we'll keep that going. Gave you guys two bets already today. Now, we might have more, but unless you're a had to beat the bookie member, not going to get them because this show is over at uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, guys, go to the website, become a member. Uh, long baseball season ago, we'll be keep crushing it. Yeah, about that, by the way. Last year in MLB, guys, June, July, August, September were the most profitable months of 2022, all in MLB. Make sure you guys uh, get on howtobeatthebookie.com. Go to the app, download that, How to Beat the Bookie. It's in the App Store and Google Play. Let's make some money, John. It's called the dog days of summer. Those months <laughs> are dog days of summer. Yep. Let's make some money.